All right, good evening, and welcome to tonight's Board of Education meeting. Let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. In accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act, adequate notification for this meeting was advertised in the record, posted at the board office and filed with the city clerk. I hereby call to order the regular public meeting on June 26th, 2023, in the Hampton Sack Auditorium at 519 p.m. Ms. Singh, will you please do a roll call? Yes. Mr. Bendezu is absent. Mr. Carroll? Present. Mr. Coleman? Present. Ms. Ferdero Alton. Present. Ms. Moore is absent. Mr. Meehan is not sworn in as yet. Mr. Powell is not here. Ms. Somerville. Present. Mr. Rodriguez, not here. Mr. James Vickers. Present. 
one, two, three, four, five are present. We do have a quorum. All right, thank you. So uh, tonight we have the pleasure of administering the oath of office to our newly appointed board member, Mr. Andrew Ian. I, Andrew G. Nguyen, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and this state under the authority of the people. So help me God. I, Andrew Meehan, do solemnly swear or affirm that I possess the qualifications prescribed by law for the office of member of the Board of Education. And that I am not disqualified as a voter pursuant to RS 19-4-1 nor disqualified due to a conviction of a crime. Or offense listed in New Jersey S 18A 12-1. And that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of that office according to the best of my abilities, so help me God. Sworn and described to before me this 26th day of June, 2023. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, be it resolved that the Hackensack Board of Education determines it necessary to meet in executive session on Monday, June 26, 2023, to discuss legal, personnel, student related matters, HIV reports, negotiations, and other confidential matters. Be it further resolved that these matters will be made public and the need for confidentiality no longer exists. We have a motion to go into executive session. Mr. Bill Alton, a second. Mr. Carroll, all those in favor say aye. 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 Right. All those opposed, and then we come back and have you come to this side. I know you can make that somewhere, but maybe you two are just in so I can just squeeze up operation. Thank you. Okay. Okay.
Um, welcome back. Good to see everyone. Can we do a roll call, please, and see? Mr. Carroll. Mrs. Carroll. Francis. Mr. Coleman. Ms. Cordero Alton. Present. Ms. Boris Absent. Mr. Meehan. Present. Mr. Powell. Present. Ms. Somerville. Present. Mr. Rodriguez is absent. Mr. James Vickery. Present. And Cora. Thank you. So tonight we'll start with some of our presentations. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Monsano with Destination and Imagination. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jim Amasano, I'm a high school principal. Uh, we were very, very fortunate this year with our Destination Imagination team. Uh, thanks to the support of our Board of Education and our central office, we were able to send them to Kansas City for the Global World Competition, where they scored very high for the state competition, and they qualified for the global competition. Uh, and without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our students, where they'll talk very quickly about uh, just some of their accomplishments this year. And their coaches. So uh, this is the team, they qualified for the state competition back in uh, March uh, that allowed, um, well, there are two teams here uh, that allowed them to go and travel to uh, Kansas City and compete against uh, international competition. Um, that took place in May uh, over the course of five days. Uh, the goal of one of the teams was to um, problem solve somewhat, um, which was, uh, I guess, trying to figure out how hyperbole works with a scientific spin to it. So there was a little bit of science, a little bit of chemistry, a little bit of physics involved in that. Uh, the other uh, team uh, competed, uh, attempting to try to change something about the culture here in Hackensack. So they actually traveled a little bit of Hackensack uh, to Kansas City and tried to explain some of the things that our community has going on and um, some areas where the community uh, can participate in improving, um, which I thought was pretty great. Um, Certificates. How would you like to do this, Mr. Sanchez? So um, I'll just read the uh, the team members' names. You guys can kind of give a little bit of a wave. Cameras over there. Right. So uh, our team members uh, that we have here tonight. Is, uh, uh, Carlos Chukichal. Joshua Turk. Uh, Jaden Vasquez. Sasuna. And this is a team that saw uh, a need for expanded uh, bilingual education opportunities in, uh, in our district, uh, which I think is a noble uh, challenge to take on. And I hope to see them continue and uh, be concerned with that interest. Um, good team, right? We have Daniel Leon. Tomas uh, Sadawi. Ethan Romero. Derek Javier Cusco Centers. And uh, David Valarisa. And the, that last set of names, uh, they're all seniors, so they're moving on from our district and uh, representing us in the world, the best and brightest that we've got to offer. And I think they did a fantastic job representing us all. So thank you guys. Much gratitude. For that. Uh, 
Uh, much gratitude to the Board of Education for uh, helping us uh, achieve some of the goals that we set out at the beginning of the year. We didn't know where it was really going to bring us when we started, but um, I think we're all pretty satisfied with the results and the experiences that we had right now. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. As they walk, I just really want to thank especially our seniors. The contributions that they've made to Hackensack High School really are immeasurable. Um, you know, everyone loves a winner, but they were an easy group to root for, and they really just did really bleed some true blue and gold into our schools and our hallways. So thank you guys for your good uh, Next, I'd like to call up Debbie Keel and get us in our Black Student Union. Um, I have Nia and Brianna here who are going to uh, do the presentation. Um, it was our intention to get here a little earlier in the year, but due to scheduling conflicts, we're here now. So um, I'm going to let the young ladies take it away. Good evening, everyone. My name is Brown Bain, and I'm the secretary of the Black Student Unit in Hackensack High School. I'm Lynn James, treasurer of CSU, and tonight we'd like to show you a short compilation of video clips presented to the HHS student body during Black History Month. It's our plan to do our presentation closer to Black History Month, but since Black History Month is rest rebel, 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 365 days of the year, tonight is as good as ever. This year, we're happy to collaborate with Lisa Hiram's film class to produce the morning, the morning announcement videos. Um, we had a great time finding old and new Black history to present back at Black High School every morning during February. And this video you're about to see was produced by graduate senior Vincent Paul Valley. I teach 11th grade, I teach in the social I am the administrative assistant who is responsible for managing the attendance in the school. I just and I'll do some time to start with the class of 1999 trumpet, attorney Laura Gray, Hackensack's first African American musical public defender. Who was the most involved with an inventor? The first is Sarah Williams. Did you know that she prospected the eye labor to make the most convenient to all women's clothes? Another female inventor would be Jerry Van she helped Chloe invent the home security system because she wanted to show more so for everyone who had she was alone. Mary Kay Parker was the first infant in the American school teacher in 1922 to make some sense of Today we're going to introduce you to the history of black music and dance starting from the 1900s to now. Developments in black music and dance are inextricably tied to American culture. Take the following many steps of the 1920s and 30s, where we have the dances of the women, the women, and the child, and the collective of the challenges in the story. Good morning, comments. My name is Alicia Brown, and I'm the president of the Black Student Union. Black History Month was founded by the historian Carter G. Wilson. Throughout his studies, he recognized the lack of African Americans in the nation's curriculum. In 1976, President Gerald Ford extended the observation to a full month honoring the contributions and achievements of Black Americans to this day. But most importantly, it's about the epic challenges and struggles Black Americans have had to overcome in order to reach these successes. From slavery to the civil rights struggles of the 20th century, today's Black Lives Matter movement. During this month's morning announcements, the Black Student Union and Ms. O'Halloran's film class will share with you some examples of Black excellence within the second month. And always, rem always remember that Black history is American history. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
of our Black Student Union, uh, their contributions, again, to the high school really are invaluable. And I thank you because the advisors to these group, it really are, they're all volunteers and they really do a fantastic job. So thank you to the four advisors. Um, next, I'd like to call up Ms. Diana Bermudez, who is our Power Outreach Coordinator, who is wonderful. Thank you, everyone. We wanted to also um, give a brief presentation about the work that we did with the Parent Outreach Office and specifically with our volunteers. I want to commend all of the parents here tonight, all of your children, the many hours they have volunteered for our program. And we're going to just go through a brief summary of the activities that we completed. And uh, again, very brief with some pictures as well. So if we could go to the next slide. Our extensive parent outreach, and that means students of um, grades 9 to 12 who have come to the school and physically be here making phone calls to rally parents to come out and support some of our parent workshops and the different kinds of activities that we hold here at the high school. We had 542 parents that participated in one or more of the parent workshops and family engagement events. And during the school year, we had a total of 112 parents who came out every week on Wednesday nights to study English as a second language. And again, this is possible because of the community volunteers that come out and serve. And we have 302 parents that receive special connections with our social service agencies outside in the community, not just in Hackensack, it could be as far as Essex County, Union County, um, to connect with an agency that was able to support, to support them in, in different ways with homelessness, with dealing with lack of food, um, lack of affordable housing, and uh, like a health insurance as well. This is one of our classes, one of our ESL volunteers at the back standing. It's Ms. Rina Segura. Thank you, Rina. So this is just an example. If we go to the next slide, you'll see some of the other classrooms. These are the parents that come at every night. On the far left, we have Ms. Leila Mirhamse, who happens to be a former trustee of this board as well. She has the more advanced um, class. These parents are actually getting ready to go and eventually take their citizenship test. Please. We can go to the next one. These are our wonderful administrators here at the high school. We held separate meetings for grade level. You see Mr. Kim and his element up there teaching parents on his phone how to navigate Genesis. Um, that was one important topic for, for grade nine presentations this year. We have Mr. Lingwood at the bottom, and these are all presentations to parents of students at risk in our school. The next one. We also have programs for students uh, at the high school. The My Future, My Plan, we held two Berkeley Community College trips. There are a lot of things that the guidance office does and other departments in the school do, but we try to find uh, where we can close that gap, you know, who's not being able to get to where they need to be, or if there's a special situation with a student that are going through um, different types of hardships, we try to come in and serve as, as that bridge or that connector with the community where they can find some help. We had social and emotional workshops. 19 students successfully completed that program. We helped 21 students transition um, from high school to now graduating and going and, and having 
alike of their own. Some of them are homeless. Some of these students are immigrant students and they're undocumented. How, helping them find services out there that are not usually traditional was a, a challenge this year, but we were able to get that support from organizations such as the Salvation Army, uh, community churches in the area. We held a homework club that had a, a weekly attendance of 50 students per month. There were peer students coming to teach the other uh, their peers. And, uh, and, and it was really nice to see them, how they were helping each other, how they were building community again after COVID, right? Coming back to the buildings and to the new normal. And we also celebrated diversity and inclusion with independent and group leading in the cafeteria after school. If we go to the next slides, we have about 86 students until April that have participated. This is one of our Bergen Community College trips. We end up the trip by going to Choripan, supporting one of our small business um, owners in Hackensack, and having lunch with them just to re-summarize what we, what we learned at, at Bergen, right? The next slide. These are some of the students that participated in the uh, diversity and inclusion reading, whether it was independent reading by picking up books in my office and coming in and checking in, or by uh, coming to the after school homework help in the cafeteria. Next slide. And this is my, my students' favorite. It's coming up to the uh, ECDC program, our pre-K program on South Main Street. We basically took the students, the high school students, to help us with child care for pre-K three and pre-K four students while parents attend the workshop. So you can see here a wonderful team of volunteers. They did face painting, we danced, we read books. We had so much fun. Next one. Last week, and we really want to thank the Hackinson High School administrative team, everyone, um, every supervisor, our principal, Mr. Marquesano, the assistant principals, the central office team, Dr. Kasmark, uh, Ms. Trisha Bailey, Ms. Natalie Carino, everyone who offers their support in why, one way or another. Uh, the superintendent's office, as well as the Board of Education for your continued support with this program, and we hope that you enjoyed our presentation. Now, we just want to um, acknowledge the student volunteers and the community volunteers with some certificates that we have received from the county office, as well as from the superintendent's office. So I'm going to call the students. I don't think I can speak. Okay. Uh, there was a couple of events going on and also um, what I learned of funeral in the community. So some of our students have uh, gone already, but we are going to still acknowledge by mentioning the name. We first have student Isabella Marby. Isabella. Thank you so much. Picture time. Thank you. Michael Carrillo. Michael's here. I think he's not here. He had to leave. I believe Michael had to leave. I'm going to take this one back. And John Pierre Hara. John E. Jordan. Ronald Delic Martinez. <laughs> Lindsay Trevor Emma, she was not able to be here tonight. Dulce Hernandez Perez. <laughs> Milady Correa Gomez. Diego Rodriguez. Thank you. 
Melanie Salas. Ashley Lizardo. Nicole Lizardo. They are sisters. Where am I? Wonderful. I have a few sisters helping in the team. John Matute. I might have sent you an extra one in the back. Thank you. Lady Alao. Camila Lojano. Ravinta Chawali. Christina Boy. Ryan Largo. Mia Asansa. And I want to acknowledge three of our senior students who couldn't be here today, but they completed more than 300 hours of volunteering over their um, years here at the high school from grade nine to 12. And they're Paula Ceballos Troya, Noemi Jimenez Alcantara, and Alondra Molina Pascal. And now we are going to have our parent ESL class facilitators who are our community volunteers. Some of them are former parents of students who graduated here. One is graduating one this year. And then we also have one of our former trustees. Uh, Ms. Linda Diambrogio, she unfortunately had to leave to a funeral, but we're gonna have the next person. Ms. Leila Amir Hanse. this one. We have Ms. Rita Segura. And we also want to acknowledge Pastor Ralph Fiorelli and his wife, Debbie Fiorelli, who are not able to be here today because they're attending a church matter. They are pastors in our community and they have been very supportive. They run the Parent ESL class level two. So we're going to present that to you and on behalf of the school community. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a wonderful evening. All right, thanks. So up next, we have Ash. Our student report. Okay, well, uh, good evening to the board, those in attendance, and those watching from home. When Mr. Montesano asked me if I wanted to join you guys in the last meeting before I graduate, there's no way I was going to decline seeing all these awesome faces today. I'm excited to share the final report on student life uh, at our high school this year. We have some incredible news to celebrate. So I'll start with our HHS chorus and band who rocked the Great Adventure Festival and earned the highest rating possible. The, the, the chorus scored an impressive 93 out of 100 and the band did great with a fantastic 92 and a half. They truly deserve a round of applause for their talent and hard work. 
The College Board has recognized the academic excellence of several of our students. Let's give a big shout out to Diego Salinas, Kaylee Tenezaka, David Gallo, David Valarezo, Jennifer Ramache, Justin Erguiles, Andre Lima, Lyra McLaurin, Lillian Rivera, and Nia James. Their exceptional achievements make us all very proud. Finally, I'm sure you know, our graduation ceremony is happening tomorrow at 2 p.m. on the field, weather permitting. It's a significant moment for our graduating students, marking the end of one chapter and the start of another. Let's come together to cheer them on and show them our support. And as I conclude my time giving my student board reports, I wanna express my heartfelt gratitude. It has been an honor to sit alongside dedicated individuals who are passionate about providing the best education and experience for our students. I've witnessed firsthand the transformative power in education and the positive impact it has on our students' lives. Thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this incredible journey. He's All right. We look forward to being with Ash tomorrow um, for graduation. So we will move on to our superintendent's report. Thank you. So let's give Ash a, another great round of applause. Ash, it's awesome. Yeah, so we'll be remiss if we didn't recognize that some of them may be leaving our Destination Imagination team, our amazing Black Student Union, and of course our community uh, helpers with our, our community outreach program. So thank you all. So good evening, everyone. It is truly a special time of the year. The past few weeks have been truly enjoyable and remind us of why we do what we do. These days have been filled with spring concerts, awards nights, banquets, and moving up ceremonies for the sole purpose of recognizing and celebrating our kids. Just this morning, we celebrated our Hackensack Middle School's eighth grade class for their accomplishments. And tomorrow, we will celebrate the accomplishments of Hackensack High School's class of 2023 at the school's 127th commencement exercises. Truly a testament to the history of this great school. Hopefully the weather will cooperate with us, but even if it doesn't, the rain will not ruin our parade. On behalf of the Board of Education, I would like to extend our congratulations and best wishes to the graduating class of 2023. Forging ahead, I'm happy to report that on Friday afternoon, we were informed by the New Jersey Department of Education that we are only one of 11 districts in the entire state being awarded a school-based mental health grant. I would like to thank Assistant Superintendent Rosemary Marks for completing this competitive grant application on the district's behalf and placing us in a position to be awarded over $292,000 this year to support the recruitment, placement, hiring, and retention of school-based mental health uh, professionals. But wait, there's more. This grant is a five-year grant, and we are eligible to receive even more funding in subsequent years. Once again, thanks to Ms. Marks and the entire SEL team for their efforts with this initiative. Moving on. It's actually great to see money from the district that's supposed to go out, so yes, absolutely. Moving on, I was recently informed that our very own trustee, Marlene Somerville, was nominated and confirmed as a member of the New Jersey School Boards Association Executive Committee. I have no doubt that she will excel in her new role and have a positive impact on education matters at the state level, but most importantly, protecting Hackensack's interests. Thank you, Marlene, for your commitment and willingness to serve on this community, uh, for your community, excuse me, and congratulations on this well to serve on. Thank you. 
As we get ready to close out this school year, I would like to take a moment to thank our entire school community for all they have done to support our young scholars this past school year. Moreover, I would especially like to acknowledge our retiring staff members for school year 2022 and 2023, who have either already left us or will be leaving us before September for their years of service to the children of Hackensack. I apologize in advance if I miss anyone, even though I don't believe I will. So they are Margarita Medina, Lori Franklin, Servette Casazzi, Jane Ferrara, Kimberly Long, Stephen Anderson, Edgardo Acosta Pardo, Jacqueline Arias Romano, Stephen Burak, Salvatore Iacono, Michelle Levy, Kathy Patassing, good luck, Mr. Montesano, Joseph Perino, Elaine Conforti, Camille Horns, Bernadette Lombardi, Anthony, and Anthony Ragone, Sonia Escobar, Cheryl, Cheryl Genovese, Leroy Montgomery, and Frank Patassi. Congratulations to all of you on your retirement. You will all be great leaders. In closing, I wish everyone a restful and enjoyable summer, vacation filled with joy, laughter, and cherished memories. Now on to the enrollment report. Our current enrollment is 5,216 students, and a total of 15 HIV investigators, investigations were completed this past month. This concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. Moving on to our public comments portion. All participants must sign in. When it is your turn, please state the following, your name, your uh, municipality, any group that you're um, affiliated that pertains to um, while you're speaking. And uh, each person has a limit of three minutes. Uh, there'll be a buzzer that will go off, and I will say thank you. And that is your cue to stop, please. Uh, please direct all comments to me as the presiding officer, and um, any response that will be offered will happen at the end of the public comment section. So we are open. Good evening. I'm Paige Delvecchio. I'm an alum of the Hackstack Public School, parent of four alumni, um, and a teacher at Paramount School for 10 years. And I'm here to talk about um, some news we got at Paramount School recently. Um, so there's some uncertainty about where it stands right now. I think it still uh, needs to be addressed. Mrs. Wickersheim has been a dedicated Fairmount kindergarten teacher for many years. Before that, she served Fairmount School as a PTA officer and was honored with a lifetime PTA membership. She also serves as our HEA building leader. In that role, she has stood up for every one of us many times this year and in previous years with all of our administrative concerns. Mrs. Wickersheim is a team player and a talented teacher. Yet, on Friday, she was informed that she would be transferred to Jackson Avenue School. There is no need for this transfer. Transfer. So the only logical conclusion is that Mrs. Wickershine is being punished for speaking up. This is particularly unsettling since it follows a pattern that has been established throughout the year. Staff members have been admonished for making professional, appropriate comments at staff meetings and at times for communicating with parents about things that are occurring in our school. Our judgment and our motives have been questioned. Significant health concerns went unaddressed and minimized. It has been implied that we only complain because we are not comfortable with change. This is not accurate. We are dedicated, hardworking professionals who are accountable to our students. We are not comfortable having our professional voices silent. I can't help but to feel that by proposing, proposing the transfer of our HA building leader, we at Fairmount School are being warned not to disagree, disagree with our administration. A very uncomfortable position to be in. A real leader welcomes suggestions and feedback from stakeholders, particularly when the leader is new to the field of elementary education and our staff has collected hundreds of units of experience. HEA exists to act as an advocate and liaison between staff and administrator. We have followed the process and we've been met with resistance, and now we we'll even feel like retribution. Mrs. Wickersheim did not deserve to be treated this way. And we all need to have our voices heard and to have our association's prospects 
through the process respect. And grow up and back teacher and association um, Fairmount has experienced a lack of trust and support for teachers, a lack of consistency in dealing with human behavior, as well as poor interpersonal relationships between our principal and the staff. Despite two meetings with the top committee, the notes have been, both notes have been shared with you. He remains dismissive of our concerns. He had stated that our concerns were petty and that he would not address some of them as he considered them passive aggressive. One particular response stands out. A staff member confided that since the beginning of the year, they had been made to feel less bad. Despite a successful career with them, they have become very anxious. Our principal's response was that maybe they should decide to get the work with us. This is not the SEL our district is trying to promote. Morning announcements by an office has spoken of building positive relationships. This is not the best. We have never seen people be done before they are up for the entire administration. We have never seen a teacher be done before we do any issues. On Friday, our kindergarten teacher joined the inside. We're told to make transfers with them before. Despite opening in our own school. Despite being told that they didn't even know what grade you will be teaching, we see this as an arbitrary and capricious action. This is what the Shimon are going to be doing in the We see this as an attempt to remove the strong voice of support in the school. Teachers will not meet with admin and parents without a rep with them because they do not trust they will be fairly supported. Joyce has been that support for the week. We want to point out that our principal has been more than confident and supportive. We do not feel that our principal can do the same. All stakeholders need to know what's happening with them. We have a dedicated staff. The overwhelming lack of confidence in the leader and the number of staff here tonight is a call to the administration and board to act on our Thank you. Very early on, I think it was made clear to me that my rules, 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 my and I am very much concerned that I am staff members and the and that was And this is the way that I am very much concerned that I am staff members and that was the way that I am very much concerned 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 that Thank you for your time and for listening to our conversation. Good evening. My name is Adrienne McKinnon. I am a Fairmount School teacher and HEA representative. I am speaking tonight because this weekend I spent grieving a loss to our Fairmount School community. Joyce Wickersheim was told around 11.30 on Friday that she will be transferred to another school. And then she was expected to go back to teach for children. This is not a way 
to promote social emotional learning or building positive relationships, which is a huge initiative in our district and our school. Joyce has been there for me as the HEA building leader, colleague, mentor, but most importantly as a friend. I respectfully ask you to decline her transfer and keep her at Fairmount School, where she has built a rapport with all of the Fairmount community, including her colleagues, the parents, but most importantly, our students. Thank you for your time. Good evening. My name is Shannon Fox Murphy, and I have been a Hackensack teacher at Fairmount School since 1991. As such, I have known Joyce Wickershine for over 25 years. In my particular position as a decade-long teacher here, I believe it is important for you, the board, as well as the rest of the community, to know what an integral part Joyce Wickershine has been to the Fairmount School community for the entire time that I have known her, in fact, for even longer. When I first came to Fairmount School in 1991, we had a very new, beautiful playground that had been built by the community in the very late 1980s. Mrs. Wickersheim and her future husband participated in the community build of that first playground. But that was just the beginning of her dedication to our community. Mrs. Wickersheim has been a mother of two, two Fairmount students, a substitute teacher, a student teacher, a Fairmount School PTA executive board member, as well as a fun fair coordinator and a coordinator for the second community build playground, among the many other roles. Those are only a few of the many other undertakings outside of her professional dedication to Fairmount School and to the Hackensack community as a teacher. As a resident of the Fairmount community, Ms. Wickershine has had the joy of being a teacher for 15 years at Fairmount School, knowing the parents, the brothers, and the sisters of her students over the years. She has continued her heartfelt professional dedication to Hackensack's Fairmount School community as a PTA liaison, the coordinator of the Fairmount Talent Show, an HEA union representative, and outside of her role as a dedicated teacher. Most notably, she is a respected building leader for HEA that provided support and direction to the staff members in a respectful, diplomatic, and calm demeanor. She has not only been a mentor and support to new teachers and her colleagues, she has often been the calm voice of reason, even in challenging meetings and scenarios. It is my fervent hope that this community, the board, and our administration recognizes the utmost dedication that Mrs. Wickershawn has to, to Fairmount School and how unjust it would be to transfer this wonderful teacher who demonstrates an unyielding work ethic, the utmost dedication, a love and professionalism towards not only her students, but also the staff at the school. Thank you. Hi, my name is Danielle Jackson. I'm a graduate of Hackensack Public Schools, a resident of the Fairmount section, as well as a parent and teacher at Fairmount Elementary School. My colleagues and I are concerned about many of the administrative policies and practices at Fairmount School. Though we voiced concerns before, we don't feel they've been addressed effectively as emails have been ignored and tell concerns have gone unresolved. It feels like our compliance is the primary focus and that it's valued more than our input and experience. Staff members, including myself, have been reassigned grade levels without sufficient justification and a tenured teacher, Joyce Wickersheim, faces a transfer to another school. Why spend money to train us in new curriculum and programs for our current teaching grade only to move us to a different grade? How does this enhance the educational program as stated in District Policy 4130? These transfers are unwarranted and unwanted, and many of us feel blindsided. We don't want special treatment or changes without input or thoughtful consideration. We want staff meetings where open dialogue is encouraged. We want to feel and be heard 
We want a sense of transparency and collaboration between staff and administration that makes Fairmount a better place for everyone, staff, students, and their families. Thank you for hearing us and for your expected support. We don't feel like we have an equal platform to be heard within our building, and we hope that that will change. Thank you. My name is Abby McBride. I'm from Jeff Gilmont School and I'm working with ATA representative. So the last time I had the honor to speak to the board, I spoke about being a part of a family at the airport and how that has been a subject of experience. So today, it's that it's really talk about a great love. Recently, I received the news that my family is able to shine and transfer to another school. I sat with that group and had an opportunity to reflect on what choice we have been making. As a colleague, it's been a year of time and someone I can depend on for support. Not only is she extremely knowledgeable, her door is always open and she's always ready to share, whether it's time, resources, or discounts. As a union building leader, Mr. Kishani provides those who work in the a safe space to work hard to start to steer and feel overwhelmed. No problem is too big or too small. Maybe she can help, but you'll find someone who can. Mr. Kishani is also diplomatic and studio. Her helpfulness is not complicated with folks in the union leadership, directly in the room. The migrants have been a very and I'm thinking if she has done for the other future to feel less than me, then we paint it on why I think that we are not really not My name is Jen Ray and the full time student on my behalf. I have happily served our students and families at Fairmont School since September 1994. I've worked under five months old, and if I may speak honestly, the morale has never been as low as it is today. These are the darkest days that Fairmont has ever seen. I respect and recognize the challenges the administration has overcome to keep our building running. Fairmount may look good on the outside, but on the inside, we are rapidly waiting. Our spirit continuously is tested and our professional expertise undervalued. Today, I speak to my friend Joyce Rippershine. As you all already know, she has been transferred while we have vacancies in our own building. Substitutes will be utilized to start the year in the food classrooms, and she is not having an assignment for her relocation from Jackson Avenue School. If I may describe Joyce to you all, Joyce is Fairmount. She is a strong advocate fighting for her students, the Hackensack community, and our staff, our Fairmount family. She served as PTA president while her children attended Fairmount. She and her husband served on communities to plan to build our school playground. She is unofficially our kindergarten school leader, always going above and beyond to help our team. Leave of confidence. She is respected by her colleagues, family, and students. Joyce is our Fairmount HEA representative and is our voice. Joyce embodies who we are at Fairmount. Joyce is generously volunteers her time, talents, and treasures to represent us. Today, I proudly stand to represent Joyce. I ask the administration to respectfully reconsider this, this decision to transfer Joyce as Fairmount will be used with both a teacher, a strong advocate, caring soul confident leader and a member of our Fairmount family. I would like to thank Jen for her heartfelt words and allow me to share them with you tonight. I personally want to end with a quote by Johan Bolke that I found touching about what has happened to the morale at Fairmount School. Treat people as if they were what they ought to be and you help them become what they are capable of becoming. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Dawn Thompson, born and raised in Hackensack, a product of the Hackensack Schools, Hackensack educator for 26 years, current resident and former Fairmount School parent. This is my home and my community. I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of an integral part of our Hackensack community, Fairmount kindergarten teacher, Joyce Wickersheim. 
and can't begin to describe the range of emotions felt by the Fairmount community when with only two days of school left, we found out without warning, Joyce Wickersheim is being uprooted, transferred out of Fairmount School while there are vacancies in our building. Those of you here tonight who know me also know I come to school each day for the students. I stay in my lane. I'm not outspoken. I focus on the children and do my job. I teach. I speak tonight with concerns about retaliation, but I speak tonight because I cannot teach my students and my children to use their voices and not do the same. I speak tonight because when the very person who helps you needs help, you cannot stand by and remain silent. Each and every day, Joyce has stood at our sides as HEA building leader, as a colleague and friend. I cannot help but feel the weight that Joyce Wickersheim supporting all of us is why we're here tonight. Joyce does not stay in her lane. Instead, Joyce reaches out, helping the others, offering support whenever needed. Joyce shares ideas, mentors staff members, and has supported administrators. Joyce works above and beyond her contractual hours for the Fairmount School community. No, Joyce does not stay in her lane. She builds bridges among administrators, staff, families, and students. Joyce does not stay in her lane. She steps up to be our HEA building leader. Joyce does all of this, leading and guiding us with dignity and diplomacy. Joyce is an integral part of Fairmount School, working tightly within the community, supporting our community, never working against it. My daughter was in Mrs. Wickersheim's kindergarten. She not only learned to read, but to love school and learning, something she carries with her to this day. There's a special love you feel when someone cares for your child, teaches, nurtures them. It touches your heart. It's how school goes from being a building to a community for learning and growing, a home. And that home matters a great deal to the students and their families. It's the reason why students go back to visit their kindergarten teachers. Why change for the sake of change is harmful when students are struggling and need stability. Sometimes it's the children who get lost in organizational decisions. We're here tonight to make sure that's not what happens. Joyce Wickersheim is always the bridge that brings people together. Joyce is never a force that tears people apart. Fairmount School is where Joyce Wickersheim belongs. Joyce Wickersheim lifts us up. Fairmount School is better because she's here. I urge you to reconsider transferring Joyce Wickersheim and keep her at Fairmount School where she belongs. Good evening. My name is Erin Sporto. I am currently a first grade teacher at Fairmount School, and I have been teaching there for 25 years. For those who know me, you know I don't love attention, confrontation, or confidence. In fact, this is my very first board meeting where I feel compelled to speak. I am here tonight because I don't speak the same time. First, just a little background. On the first day of every new school year, I tell my students to choose kindness. I teach them that learning to be kind is just as important as learning how to read and learning how to become an mathematician. We work together, my students and myself, to build the best classroom community. We work together to make decisions about our own classroom. I have also taught my students that they, if they see something, they need to say something. We teach our students not to be bystanders and to speak up for those being hurt. I am here tonight as a bystander. I want you to know that I have not been personally targeted or hurt in any way this year, but I am here tonight because of Joyce. I met Joyce when her son was in second grade over 20 years ago. She was a PTA parent at that time, and now I get to teach with her. She has been at Fairmount School for over 20 years as a parent, PTA member, and now kindergarten teacher, PTA member, and our ATA building leader. As you know, on Friday, she was told she was being moved to back to Neverland School without any other warning or conversation prior and with just two days left in the school year. She needed to pack up her room and get her things ready for the move. As our HEA building leader, Joyce has always had her backs. She has gone to meetings with us and for us. So I guess to make a long story short, what I'm asking for is that our school be run like we want our classrooms to be run. My hope is that our leader works more collaboratively with staff and that decisions are being made with teachers' consideration. 
and making decisions like this so that our staff is being treated as educational professionals that we are. I hope that you can reconsider the answer. Hi, good evening. My name is Jennifer Zenga. I'm a Second Tech High School graduate, also the school counselor at Fairmont School. I would like to start off by apologizing in advance if I appear nervous, but this is my first time speaking at a Board of Education meeting in my 16 years teaching. As Fairmount School Counselor, I provide the students with social and emotional lessons. One of the lessons that I teach the students at Fairmount School is discussing the difference between conflicts and bullying. In that lesson, we discuss what it means to be a bystander versus what it looks like to be an upstander. And although my classroom lesson ends with the coloring of a superhero with a big giant letter U on the cape representing we all have the ability to be an upstander, I'm going to show you that in a different way tonight. I stand before you tonight where I'm choosing to be a role model on being an upstander. I am here to speak in support of my fellow colleague, Joyce Wickershine. The Hackensack Public Schools mission and vision for the 2022-2023 school year states, we believe that our children and our teachers are our most precious gifts. On Friday, June 23rd, during the last hour of the school day, I can tell you that in that moment, Joyce Wickershine was not treated as one of those precious gifts when she was told she would be transferring to Jackson Avenue School next year. I sit here and I wonder why. Why Joyce? Why a veteran teacher? We are short staff and need new hires. All I keep thinking about is the fear that any one of us could be. Joyce was told without any warning or conversation prior to that day. Again, I will quote our district mission and vision. It states, we also understand that achieving our goals requires collaboration between teachers, parents, students, and the broader community. The word collaboration sticks out to me here. There is a lack of collaboration, which means we are not keeping our focus on our district's mission and vision and hindering our ability to fully be able to achieve our goals. I am struggling hard because as the saying goes, it's hard to pour from an empty cup. As the social and emotional leader in the building that provides support for not only students, but their families and of course, all the staff, this transfer has impacted our Fairmount community and greatly impacted our overall culture and climate within the building, which I continue to work tirelessly to keep it moving in a positive direction. This was a huge setback. At Fairmount, we use the term Fairmount family often when describing all the staff in the building. Please reconsider the transfer our dedicated and beloved kindergarten teacher, Joyce Wickershine, to keep our Fairmount family together. Thank you. Uh, good evening to the members of the Board of Ed. Um, I'm Samuel Thompson. I live in Hackensack as I have all my life. I'm a former Hackensack uh, public schools alum and specifically a former Fairmount alum. As a former uh, Fairmount alum, I can specifically attest to the very strong community um, in the school. Uh, I think the presence of all of these teachers here tonight speaks to that. Um, and I can speak that it goes beyond the teachers as well to the students. Uh, just walking in tonight, I saw so many familiar faces and greeted so many people, all who are former staff from Grand Island. Um, and I think that community is part of what makes Hackensack School so great. Um, we are a very tight knit community, and I can specifically test that Fairmount has a very strong community. And that's really important for these fundamental leaders that we see in elementary school. I think it's very important to have that type of thing. And I think in removing the teacher, especially as early as kindergarten, that's a very major setback, um, not only for the teachers, but for students as well. Um, I know specifically, I can attest that kindergarten teachers make such a deep impact on the team. For me, uh, my kindergarten teacher came to a scholarship dinner last year. Uh, I was awarded a Unicode scholarship 
and my kindergarten teacher had seen my name and came out to support me. Um, while I did not personally have to support her child, my sister did, and I can specifically attest to the impact that she had on her to this day. She's still a household name, and we still see the impacts of her teaching. Um, as the leaders of the community that is Packard Tech Public School, I really hope that you can take the words from all these community members um, to mind, to heart, and act in the best interest of this community. It's really important to keep this uh, community together for the betterment of both the staff and for students alike. So please take the words to heart and please do what's best for the community. Thank you for your time. Laura Rodriguez, Hackensack, New Jersey. I just want to make sure that the fair amount um, people have their time uninterrupted. So the reason I am here um, after quite some time not being here is to give acknowledgement to the improvement that has happened within the community and more specifically the Board of Education in the Central Office. Four years ago, this very month, um, our school district was in the news a lot. They were in the news in the state and the nation because we had a trustee that didn't believe that we should advance curriculum that everybody else in the state believed we should. And as I have a nice little shirt on, compliments to the middle school, we all know that we're talking about the night that we were here up until midnight, just so that people could understand that individuals had the right to be themselves. Three years ago, I resigned from this very board because, you know what? I could get a lot more done as a parent to work for change for members of the LGBTQ community. So as a parent, Mr. Sanchez and Mr. Sapero allowed me to work with school members so that Hackensack has a gay straight alliance in their middle school. That is something that you should all be proud of. Hackensack is one of three school districts in Bergen County that have a gay straight alliance. We were the second. Um, and then after us, TNEC followed and Tenafly preceded us. Superintendent Sanchez arranged for in November the flying of the progressive flag year round, not just June, but year round at your very Board of Education headquarters. So when you go in every month, you get to see that flag. And you can remember how four years ago we wouldn't th think that was possible. My time is dwindling, so what I'm here to talk about right now is Dr. Soto. Dr. Soto, as an elementary school teacher, walked to walk, walk, I'm sorry, elementary school principal, walked to walk and talked to the talk. She is about inclusivity to children who, when they get to the middle school, they'll be able to join the GSA. I don't necessarily know that everybody up on the dais realizes just what an ex I just don't think everybody realizes that once you get to the middle school, you have that foundation, thankfully, because the Board of Education gave them a GSA. And you have that foundation when you're at the high school. But more and more kids are identifying on the rainbow in elementary school. And so when you see somebody like Dr. Soto, who flies the flag, keeps her door open, and lets a little kid talk to them because they can't talk to somebody at home, that person needs to be acknowledged. And so 
I just wanted to thank all of you for the strides you have made in the four years since the days we were a joke because we could not even provide inclusivity for the students that needed it. So once again, thank you very much for what you have done, for what people like Dr. Soto do. And one more thing I'd be remiss to say, Rick Salkin, I want to thank him for the 13 years that he served the Board of Education, seven years that I was on the board. Rick died last week, and I think we should just acknowledge the fact that people had very strong feelings about Rick Salkin, but he was a legal mastermind that kept the district out of a lot of trouble. So thank you for the extra time. I really appreciate it. My name is Allison. I'm a resident of the Parents of Two Children Day. I would like to discuss bullying as my son who has been trained has been bullied for the last nine years to the point where he's not one of his schools. He's fearful because of this one who takes him away. It has gotten so far that I have five police reports from threats and inappropriate uh, messages that he has not seen. My concern is not only for my son, but for other children that are being bullied and maybe don't have the open relationship that I have with my son to come in and tell me what is being said and show me what is being done so that I can stand up for him. Um, I do want to say I have spoken with the principal of the Hackback Middle School. I do want to condemn um, men her for being compassionate as I could see it in her face every time I went in there to speak with her, she always made time for me. But I also know her hands can only go so far as well. And I feel that we need to be more stricter with this bullying and imitation, uh, intimidation and harassment. I have filled out three HIVs. I am currently waiting and so we complete department on the third one with the same intervention. Two of them came back non-founding. This one, the third one that I have just filled out on June 5th, we are wait, currently waiting now for that one to come back um, so I can inform the police department level as well. Like I said, I'm not just here for my son. I want to hear from these children that may be getting bullied and not being able, not being able to speak up or don't have anybody to talk to. I, my son is fortunate. We are an open family. We talk about everything and he it feels safe coming to me, but sometimes it does not feel safe going to school. I've had to keep him home for mental health days because he cannot physically go to school. Mentally, he cannot go. So I feel we need to do more than just let the first one slide, let the second one slide. We need to make a stand against bullying, harassment, and intimidation. There's no reason for it. I grew up with, without that in my world, thank God. But now our children have to grow up with it. And I think it's time that we all stand up and we stop it. And the only way we can stop it is by being the voice for our children. Thank you. So I just wrote my name down. I am Reed Rodriguez. I'm, um, I live in Hackensack, have for all my life, and I was went to Hackensack Middle School and not get further. I was bullied since, I want to say, fourth grade for different reasons, but it's concerning that, that we are still dealing with bullying issues. I left, in fact, I left Hackensack Middle School during eighth grade instead of staying with my friends because I did not feel supported. So I, you know you guys can't ask I can't ask you guys to comment, but please think about what you guys are doing as a board to help kids like me, help kids like my friends who have been bullied and don't want to even go to school. Hence, why half my friends have transferred to the academy, have transferred to charter school. So please think about that. All right, have a good day.
I want to talk about the failure of this history and implementing Thomas uh, curriculum in, uh, in the school. This is a state mandate, 20 years plus, and we have still failed our students and our community. What is the problem? Do we have people in place that can implement it? That's a, that's a question that the community would like to know. How long is it going to take? And why is it taking so long to uh, implement? If you don't know how to implement it, you need to maybe you get with me because I can tell you how it should be implemented. It's not a set alone curriculum. It is supposed to be in the history of the African American should be implemented in every subject, not a standard. When is enough is enough? We're tired of hearing all the damn excuses. It's taking, you know, we're going to work on it. We're doing this. We're tired of hearing that now. So I'm advising the board, not the board, but the superintendents. You need to get yourself together because um, all I'm going to tell you is I'm going to start going around and start speaking to the community and telling them the failure of what you're doing. I don't care who from the community is involved with curriculum or not. You're failing the community. And enough is enough. Good evening, Donna West, South President, half of teacher, and HEA President. I am so proud of my family, and my family, colleagues, and members. But I stand here more so as the president of the association because Joyce isn't the only one. And I get the emails and I get the phone calls of staff members who have been blindsided or who have not been told that they're going to be transferred or in some ways retaliated against the classroom assignments that are changed or eliminated. And I started connecting the dots, like many of the Fairmount staff said, and it would seem to be the people who are either my building leaders or association reps. That can be. I have, we meet regularly, monthly with the administration and we bring our concerns to the table. We actually had a meeting today and our meetings are moving, as Mr. Sanchez will tell you, in a very good direction to the point where if I bring him concerns, he will say, did you address it with the building leader? <laughs> and for some reason over the past couple of years, it's getting more and more difficult to address things with building leaders. I need to know what to tell my members, especially building leaders and association reps who are only doing what they're supposed to do when they meet and speak up for the staff in the building. The relationship should not be antagonistic, but this is the sense that I'm getting as I'm the one who gets the email and the phone call and the text message. So Joyce is not the only one. And I want this board and Mr. Sanchez, because we ended our meeting today very positively, and we've asked to come to the table. We wanted to figure out how to have a round table with the building admin, something that's going to help us understand that we are in this together. We are not here to fight, but when we speak up, 
it is for us to do what is best for our children via the staff that work here. And so I just want to ask or put on record that I am concerned about what is presently happening and has been happening, especially over the last year. Thank you. Hi, uh, Tom Frizzano, um, Hexic High School teacher. Um, listening to the many people in our community speak tonight, uh, one thing is very much on everybody's mind is um, the ability to people to communicate effectively and how those communications are uh, are transferred uh, efficiently, clearly, directly. Um, it's a problematic situation when emails can go unanswered. It's a problematic situation when you can't find information that you're looking for. Uh, problematic uh, when on a casual conversation you start asking questions. Um, the questions start getting more interesting uh, once you get past the basic interrogatives. I mean, we know the who's and the what's. We do know the where's. We often know the when's. But when you start to dig a little farther and you start asking the questions like why and how, and we have a failure to announce why things are happening or how things are happening, how the process is supposed to go. Um, it means that there's a communication breakdown. Uh, some time ago, I stood at the same podium uh, speaking about uh, issues that end up plaguing our community, um, our educational community. And some of those issues are communication between uh, staff and parents. Some of those uh, issues are uh, communications between administration and staff. I think we need to uh, take an opportunity at the end of this uh, school year uh, do what most people do in situations where they find themselves at the conclusion of certain things, they reflect, right? You take a second, you take a breath, you look around, you see the people who you're standing by, you see the people that you're standing by, and uh, and you think to yourself about the quality of the task that you've been challenged to do and whether or not you've been able to get it done. And I will bet you dollars to donuts, the ones who have been successful, the ones who have communicated most efficiently, um, and that's what I hope that you have an opportunity to reflect on as I uh, see the mic. Thank you. These are questions that mom had. Um, I just have a few concerns. I wanted to speak in the last meeting, but I didn't get a chance. Um, just as a parent, I would like to the building to be cool to be more sanitized, especially during the winter months. Um, please let the nurse in the building that burn out every time I come to that would be able to stay. So if some more sanitizing uh, would be nice. Another concern I have is recently with NJSLA testing, also at the same time, it, um, I found out that meeting assessments were assigned around the same time. And uh, my teacher was so that she said that she would call in and send the deadline. But maybe in the future, we could space it out a little bit more because the state testing is a lot on the kids already. It's starting to find people that have it in. So a little bit more space between the uh, testing would be nice. And um, another thing is uh, COVID funding for further educational enrichment. So for my son, I feel like he could use a little bit more help, but the problem is he doesn't swallow. Because um, I guess we'll have to be really really be fun to get into the health. So any sort of program that could fill in the gap for kids that could still use the extra enrichment would be nice as a school. And uh, more STEAM programs as a school as well. 
more educational programs we want to appreciate and I think all the kids are struggling with the uh, academic Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any on oh wow. Anybody else in the room, Jen? All right, thank you. you go. Okay. Okay, following the rules. I appreciate a rule following. I'll be ready. All right, so um, I'm going to move on. Actually, before we do that, let's address some of the um, pieces in the room that, that we can. Um, grandma. Um, Ms. Ms. Rodriguez, thank you for the uh, words of encouragement. That is ongoing work, though, and our promise is that we will continue it. Thank you um, for also encouraging Dr. Soto in the good work. Um, and we always applaud any of our administrators who are um, working for inclusiveness. Um, so uh, our last friend who spoke of our parents, um, I just want to say that um, I hear the struggle for those those um, kids that may not quite fit the category that you know qualify for certain things and but we just know our babies are behind um and and that is a hard place to find our kids um so as, as we do have you know programs with, you know i know that they're always looking at different things so um you know we hear you and we know that that um there is this gap that people are working through so um i just want you to know that that i that i understood and heard what you were, were saying um our parent who brought the conversation about bullying obviously i cannot address any specific student thing but i i, I will say i am thankful that you um did take it to the appropriate level first. Oh, there you are. Um, thank you for, for, for following the correct protocol. Um, I'm sorry that this is happening. It, 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 I can't address anything about that because it's a student, but um, I'm glad that you're feeling heard at the school level. And that's um, the first place that you should have started. And I'm glad that you're feeling heard. Um, but always advocate for your baby. That's what I'm going to Mr. Geddes, here he is. Thank you. Um, my promise to you is, and because I've actually received several other things um, this month regarding that, um, I will dig into that and have a response. If you'll give me a couple of weeks to dig into that, and I'll have a fuller response for that. And um, I cannot obviously go into um, a personnel matter from the days. But I can say that you have been heard, and we are thankful that you came to speak on behalf of a colleague. Um, much appreciated.
moving on now, I have to move on to our resolutions. Okay, first I have to approve our minutes in the last one. Be it resolved that the Hackensack Board of Education approved the regular meeting minutes and closed session um, minutes of May 22nd, 2023, the special minute meeting minutes of June 1st, 2023 as submitted. Can I have a motion for that? Motion. Um, Ms. Somerville, thank you. And a second from Mr. Powell. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any no's? And there are none. All right, starting with our resolutions, personnel, Mr. Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. I have one and two. Uh, make one amendment and one addition to the personnel agenda. Uh, for B7, it's changed to 102,000. And uh, beyond S, we're adding T. Which is being resolved that with the conclusion of the 2022 2023 school year, after due consideration, contemplation, and review, the Hackensack Board of Education hereby approves the annual evaluation of Superintendent Robert Sanchez in accordance with the requirements of NJSA 18A colon 17 20. Now, with that, I move for the approval of resolutions 8.1, 8 with the upon the recommendation of the superintendent. All right. Mr. Coleman, make a motion. Can I have a second? All right. Mr. Powell, make a second. Can we do a roll call, please? Yes, uh, Mr. Karen. Yes. Mr. Pollen. Yes. Ms. Cordero Alden. Ms. Cordero Alden. Yes, one moment, please. Ms. Maury is absent. Mr. Powell. Ms. Cordero Alden. Wait, oh, oh sorry. So um, I agree with everything except R. Okay, um, continuing, Ms. Mori is absent. Mr. Powell? Yeah. Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez is absent. Mr. James Vickery? Uh, yes, to all except R. Yes, to all except R. Mr. Meehan? Yes. And they met you all here, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, motion passes. All right, moving on to uh, policy. Hi, good evening, everyone. So be it resolved that the Hackensack Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, approve the first reading of the following policies. We have no policies for first reading, and we have policies P2520, instructional revised and new. We have 3217, corporal punishment, which is being revised. 4217, again, a new policy in its place. Health services policy, P5305, revised. PNR5308, student health records. PNR5310, health services. And P7440, school district security, which are all being revised. Motion brought forward for the board to approve. Thank you, Ms. Somerville. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Roll call, please. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Cordero Alton? Yes. Ms. Mori is absent. Mr. Meehan? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Ms. Somerville? Yes. 
Mr. Reedy is absent. Mr. James Vickery. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, curriculum. Scott, uh, Jen's not here. So, um, everyone, curriculum is pretty long for this meeting, so I'm not going to go through it. Uh, one by one, we have actually C1 through C70. So be it resolved that the Hackensack Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, approve and ratify the following uh, policies, C1 through C70 um, for our curriculum. I bring it forward for the board to approve. All right, um, a second, Mr. Powell. Are, is there any discussion of any of these items? All right, I will call for you. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Cordero? Alta? Yes. Ms. Morris absent. Mr. Meehan? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez is absent. Mr. James Vickery? Yes. Motion passes. Right. Moving on the finance and budget. Um, Mr. Carroll? Yes. Um, be it resolved and acts like Board of Education. Our recommendation of the superintendent and the school business administrator, board secretary, accepts D through 32. Um, highlighted D6, uh, resolution asking the district for a bill dealing with uh, mental health for the governor to sign. D8 and 9, um, allocation of our reserves. And that's to the maximum amount we're allowed. And D11 is the 2024 tuition rate. And D32, that was to approve the asset loans. All right, thank you. So, Mr. Carroll made a motion. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Guadero. Out me. Um, any discussion? Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Guadero Alton? Yes. Ms. Morris absent. Mr. Meehan? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Som Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez is absent. Mr. James Vickery? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Um, buildings and grounds. Mr. Carroll. Uh, be it resolved, acts like Board of Education upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and the Business Administrator, Board Secretary of Schools, uh, E1 and E16 which is basically everything for next year's budget. Okay, uh, can I get a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Any discussion with the items? I can't tell you most, I can't tell you all of those items are basically trying to move forward for next year's yeah. anything that's happening next year because of the chain supply, all that drama truck so that we don't get behind. Um, roll call, please. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Cordero Alton? Yes. As far as absent, Mr. Meehan? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez is absent. Mr. James Vickery? Yes. Motion passes. Anybody have any old business? Anybody have any new business? All right, we will quickly run through board comments. Mr. Powell, you're up. Board comments. Well, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, good evening, everyone. 
thank you for coming. And uh, not much to say. Uh, just thank everyone for coming to the microphone as always. Thank the board for what you do. And I just want to say special thanks to Akinsac uh, School Administration. You're doing a wonderful job. Thank you to our custodians, our tech guys. Without them, we wouldn't be having this meeting. Just thanks to everyone that works in the school district. Thanks to our wonderful teachers. You are the best. Thank you for what you do for our kids. My son went to the system, so I can attest to that. Just thanks to everyone that works in Hackensack School District to make this history what it is, a great success. And graduation is here. Congratulations to everyone. All the way from pre k up, moving up ceremonies. I went to Hillers. I had a chance to visit Hillers. It was, you know, it was a great graduation. Got wet in the process, but it was worth coming over there. And uh, just congratulations to everyone tomorrow. Hope the weather is great so we can go out and celebrate and have a wonderful time. And last but not least, uh, just also congratulations to our students that have left us who just graduated. Uh, my son was one of those, uh, graduated from St. Peter's. I just want to say thank you to everyone who was involved in his life. I'll never forget you guys. But I want to send a special thank you to uh, Nelke Parker. That's where we started. Swear to God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And to the track coaches that helped my son with his scholarship to St. Peter's. I just want to thank all sports coaches, but especially the track coaches. And I just want to say this to everyone, and I'm done. My son got into track accidentally. He wanted to play basketball. He didn't make the basketball team. He came over. Dad, what I'm going to do? I said, you're not going to stay here and do to another sport. You're going to try something else. He got into track, and it was one of the best things that ever happened to my son. Not only because he didn't know he had the talent, but this is about the coaches. They nurtured my son, and they mentored my son into the man that he is today. And especially Miss, uh, Miss Michelle, you're like a mom to my son. And Coach Vinsky, if I said his name right, you took him under your wings, and you made him into the man he is today. And I will forever be grateful to all of you. And just hope we have a great graduation. Happy holidays to everyone. Be safe and Godspeed. Thank you again for coming. Bye, right, Ms. Somerville. I'm sorry. What? Your turn. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, my apologies. I, I can't hear. Um, congratulations to all of our graduates. Congratulations on all the moving up ceremonies. Um, I miss going to Miss, I missed it this morning because of the rain. By the time I got out, you guys, you guys were quick, you were done. <laughs> but Miss Soto, I give you and your Hillers family, I, I gotta give you guys the thumbs up. Those kids were awesome. I am a fan of corny jokes. So thank you very much for intersplicing that into the presentation. But you guys did a really awesome job. But again, to all of the graduates, congratulations to everyone. Um, special shout out to Ash. I will actually give him his card tomorrow. I left it home because I forgot I needed to be here at 515. Didn't have time to go home to get it. Um, to the Paramount family, I, I feel you guys' pain. You guys know that you guys are home to me. Both my Miss Terracino still can't get used to your new name. It, 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 one of these days, I will remember it. But I mean, you guys are family, and to see you guys sitting here, you know, looking so sorrowful, on, honestly, it breaks my heart. Miss Rikasham was actually my, one of my kids' preschool, I mean, kindergarten teacher. So, uh, I mean, again, I, I understand, and I'm hopeful that there's a resolution between you guys and the superintendent and, and the principal. Uh, I mean, I, I don't play a part in that. But I'm hoping you guys can come to a, a resolution that works for everybody, right, regardless of the circumstances. But know that you guys have my heart, you guys have my love, and, you know, my support whenever you guys um, need it. And again, Mr. Powell, I had the pleasure of seeing your son walk across the stage uh, graduation. Congratulations. And uh, again, 
a fabulous, you know, job for Hackensack showing that, you know, our schools can do great things. Mr. Powell's son, I mean, he's not bragging on his own kid, but I will. His son actually got an internship to the feds that he is doing this summer. I mean, you know, one of, I think, 10 kids or something selected from um, St. Peter's to do that. He's also got accepted into the Rutgers master's program. So he's going on to do that over um, next year. And he also got a scholarship to be on their sports team. So again, it goes to show that when you put your heart and your soul and everything into your students, there's good things to come from it on the back end. So I will keep this short and sweet. Thank you guys for coming out. You know, thank you guys for your support and for everybody here, you know, enjoy your evening and the best of luck to everybody and whatever you came before us with. Good evening. Uh, many of you don't know me. I was just appointed this evening, and I really appreciated um, the type of family that the Hackensack Education Association showed. Uh, supporting one of your colleagues is uh, a really special thing uh, when you believe that perhaps that things could be done a different way. And that's all it is, um, providing constructive feedback. So we welcome that, we embrace it um, as we do, and how we appreciate all of you as teachers, because I myself am a teacher in Essex County. So I understand what you guys go through every single day. Uh, but a big thank you to the board, as well as to Mr. Sanchez, who has welcomed me, uh, President James Vickery, uh, for providing the initial guidance and leadership as well as my distinguished board members who reached out to me uh, to kind of make me feel welcome, as well as giving me the advice and guidance um, to serve as the new board member. And to all of the new graduates, as you mark a new journey, you have achieved a new milestone in your education. And we look forward to uh, hearing more good news as you move on to college and beyond, to successful careers, hopefully in STEM. Um, that is the way to go. And you will live the American dream. That's it, thank you. All right. Um, Mr. Coleman. I know. You know, Mother Nature saw fit that I uh, not give my graduation speech, so here it goes. I'm joking. I'm not. We didn't get to give it today. But um, I, I wanted to give a special thanks to Fairmount Elementary School. Uh, this uh, was my eighth and final year as a Fairmount parent. And I could not be happier with the education that my children received. Uh, you met them where they were, you helped them uh, reach their full potential. My kids, my three kids ran the gamut from gifted and talented. And uh, I know I've shouted out Ms. Thompson several times, but it's always a, a good thing when your kid says, you know, I say, hey, there's Miss Thompson. Go say hi. I, like, I don't want to talk to her. She was hard on me. That's a good thing. <laughs> so she identified a talent and she pushed her and she reached her fullest potential with you. And I want to thank you. Um, I'm going to be remiss in not naming all of my kids' 12 teachers. I'll name the ones that I can remember right now. Uh, Ms. Yi. You, as as far as uh, meeting my kids where they are, like I said, I had you know, two and gifted and talented, and you were the teacher that identified a special need in my youngest child. And you pursued it, you didn't give up on it. You wound up getting a 504 form, and I really, really appreciate your keen eye for it. And you're, uh, ability to you know bring the most out of my kids um, it's long i don't know if she's here but congratulations on your retirement 
uh, in the short bridge this past year, this Montone, uh, this Wickershire, my son's kindergarten teacher. It's been a wonderful journey. Uh, I wish I could have you know, taken a ride on your elevator, but I, I won't have that chance. But uh, I'm, I'm on to that next chapter. I'm going into my eighth of what will be 11 years at Hackensack Middle School parent. And uh, I look forward to you uh, teachers and administrators at the uh, middle school to equally push my kids. Well, yeah, there's only one left, but yeah, give them a shove. But uh, I'm, I'm very happy with how everything has been going in the school district personally and anecdotally is just for me. Um, for anyone that's not satisfied, uh, hopefully we have the administrators and teachers in place that will try to make the most out of each kid's educational journey. So uh, thank you and good night. Square out. Hello. Is that loud enough? Um, tonight was kind of a mixed bag for me. Uh, it was really nice being in this bigger space and really getting to see how many people were here today. Uh, for the most part, it sounds like we had a lot of people here for the different events, um, the Black Student Union, the um, Innovations Group, and, and that was wonderful. Um, and another thing that was really wonderful was the community of the Fairmount teachers and Fairmount parents and Fairmount students that came out this evening. Um, I don't think I'm saying anything that y'all didn't hear here tonight, which sounds like it's a little bit challenging over there right now. And I just want you to know that it's important that you do exactly what you did today. There's only so much that we here on the board can do. You actually can do the most. This was one step. Um, and I'm hoping that from the administration top down, the entire scenario happening at every school with their transfers, resignations, terminations, really gets evaluated um, and gets identified. We do have a shortage, it's something we talk about all the time, it's something that's being discussed throughout the country. So keep doing what you're doing. I'm sorry that you had to come out here this evening for this reason, but I am very grateful to see the community that Fairmount continues to have. I too am a Fairmount parent, my first child, went to Fairmount, so I see a lot of teachers and friends um, from then. Mrs. Carlson happens to be one of my favorite, just saying. Um, so thank you. I'm very much excited about all these graduations that have been taking place. I am so sorry, Ms. Whitaker, that I could not attend um, the middle school graduation today, but I was looking for, did I do that wrong? Dr. Whiting. Dr. Whiting, Mrs. Whitaker, I am so sorry. Uh, I couldn't attend the middle school graduation, but I am loving seeing all these children. One way back there who graduated class of 2018 with my child. Um, I, I really think that at the end of the day, amazing and really big things happened here. You know, I, I hope that we walk away with all the positive because I'm definitely feeling it and being invited to all of the events that have taken place for all of our students, our athletes, our artists, our clubs, all the different clubs that Hackensack has and all the accomplishments. So um, great year for all of our kids, uh, hopefully a safe summer and, and a most enjoyable one. Um, and then back on the grind, right? Like it doesn't stop right now, but it really speeds up again in August. So enjoy the time right now and thank you. Carol? Eight, the best for last, right? Not last. <laughs> That's Which is the last. Yeah. That's the last. Sorry, Scott. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I 
want to be brief, but um, congratulations to the Global Finals honorees tonight. And um, uh, let's see, thank you, Ms. Geddes, I think she left with the um, Black Student Union for their presentation, although it's not uh, February. Black history is American history. It should be incorporated, uh, not bound to just February. Um, the high school community outreach program, I think is a wonderful program. I love seeing people give back, especially young students. That's awesome. Um, Ash. I know he's gone already. I know, I know he don't have homework because it's not school in the school year, but I tell you, sometimes I, when I come here after work and I come to these meetings, I see Ash and his energy just brightens us up. I, I can speak for everybody here. Um, and Ash, I know you're home, but I hope you get this message. Um, I believe that's a special kid and he's destined for good things. And I wish him luck. He'll be missed by us for sure, for sure by me. Um, so good luck to him on the next chapter in his life. I wish him well. Uh, let's see. Um, Trustee Mahan, how you doing? <laughs> uh, welcome, and we look forward to working with you. Uh, working together to move this district forward and um, to the teachers and staff, thank you for your dedication, for all that you do for the district, for the children. Um, and I just want to acknowledge we, we do hear you. You know, it may not get to us right away, but we do hear you and we are listening. And as for Fairmount School, I went to Hillers, so <laughs> I, I, I honestly think Hillers is the best. <laughs> being a little biased, being a little biased, but I, I will say for 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 Fairmount, you guys, my children went to Fairmount, and that staff is amazing, and you will always. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I'm looking at um Mr. Vacchio. It's Thompson. Um I'm sorry. Take it to me. <laughs> You guys um, will always uh -huh. be dear to me and my family. <laughs> I appreciate you. Miss uh, Cox Murphy, you're awesome. Um, again, uh, it's good to see how you guys really stick together and come out here. And um, again, I apologize for getting emotional. But they were with me through uh, hard times. Um, and again, thank thank you all, uh, all the teachers and staff. You guys did a great job. The year is over. Um, enjoy your summer. And um, <laughs> that's it for me. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say condolences to Rick Salkin's family and friends. Just wanted to say that. Thank you. So, um, that's a lot to follow. Um, 
let me start with um it has been a busy season for all of you and um all we have to do is go sit and enjoy all of your hard work um all the events that we do we go and we get to enjoy it Oh, sorry. Thank you. We get to go. My voice is going. I'm not sick. I promise. Um, we get to go and enjoy all of your hard work, and um, we get to go and have very nice dinners and all of those things, and see the result of um what you have done over the years from the very beginning to the time that they graduate. And um, we have the honor of seeing the continuum, right? They, they a lot of times leave y'all and then you just get to see them in passing. And we get to see the end result of all the scholarships that they get and all the different things that they get to do. And so I genuinely say thank you. You all do an amazing job with the students that we have, and we get to see it from the very beginning to when they leave. Um, we get to take part in the moving up ceremonies. I've gotten to uh, be a part of all of them, except I did not get to go to Hiller's. I apologize. You know, I have two fourth graders myself at Fairmount. That's so I, I got to be daddy that day. And um, so I could not attend Taylor's, but I did get to go to the um, other ones. And then um, I was able to be at the graduation today or the moving up ceremony today for the middle school. It was fantastic, lead fast. And um, but I will give a shout out to um, Mr. Coleman, who worked hard to prepare what I believe was probably the speech of a lifetime. Um, it would have changed everyone's life. I know. And, and um, Giada Oates um, and um, Isabella King, I know they all had speeches, and I'm sure there were others. They're going to get to give them tomorrow. Perfect. How can I, I was what time and how can we like I see that <laughs> because um, <laughs> Right, relate is not denied, very nice. And because they did, I'm sure, put in a lot of work and um, it is much appreciated. We look forward to tomorrow's um, excitement. Um, the Black Student Union, I wanna say how much I appreciated the video. It was fantastic and uh, much appreciated that there were, it was closed captioning on it. Um, the little things in life for me are very important and that is one of the um, I'm going to say a little blurb about Fairmount, as I have been a parent of Fairmount for a decade. Um, we're going to have one tiny year of reprieve, and then I have one coming, so don't worry. Um, we have been there for 10 years as Fairmount parents. And um, I think about our journey as we have been there, and I see so many faces that have impacted our, and it's not just our kids, it is our entire family life. And it's not just, you know, we come home from school and it, like, when you are in our family, who has a very large blended family of biological and adopted and fostered, and then now we're all one, and it's the whole thing, Mrs. Anka plays a really important role in the life of our family. Dr. Whiting's gonna find that out next year. 
Um, Ms. Gordo, the, the way she impacted one of our children, you will never forget that. You know, I, I think of other, I don't want to call out specific ones because I have them in all different levels. Um, and Ms. Thompson, Ms. Stein, and having to have hard conversations with Ms. Stein about re repeating. Um, and all those things, they did in such a gracious and loving way because it wasn't about mama and daddy and daddy being on the board and not that it, none of that ever mattered to any human in that building. It was about my children, first and foremost. And that's all we ever cared about. Now, I promised I wasn't gonna do this, but there's one person in this building that has forever changed the life of one of my children. And that is Ms. Clemente Romano, who is sobbing already. And she's, I'm not sure she's going to be okay with my son leaving the school, um, but she has forever changed the life of our family because we've had lots of challenges, but she has gone above and beyond making sure that we have been successful. From two broken arms at one time, because that's more than a lot, to, you know, from she couldn't be there the first day of school. So we are doing a FaceTime call before school. She has always loved my child and made sure that he was successful. So I just want to say thank you. And um, we got one coming, so don't worry. So thank you, Fairmount family. And apologies to Dr. Whiting for what's to come. Wait, Scott, hey, Scott, just one thing. Mr. Fanchel, I, I slipped my mind to address the family that came forward in reference to the um, bullying when you're done with whatever investigation you're doing. Could you just fill us in on exactly what happened? Because that one I'm not aware of. All right, thank you. All right, so may I have a motion to adjourn? <laughs> a second? Second. second. All those in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.